Welcome everybody, it's Chris Petri here and I want to thank you for coming by and painting along with us or just watching if you're going to have a good time and watch how watercolor artists work. I've been painting watercolors for 15 years and I've been on YouTube for pro probably more than five years now. We're having a lot of fun here. I'm just glad you're coming by to watch along or if you're grabbing your paints and your brushes and you're going to paint along with us, you're going to have a fantastic time. So this is the finished painting. Um, it's a gorgeous scene of a seascape, basically. Uh, we have a beautiful watercolor, classic watercolor sky. Wash, tons of water, water flowing, beautiful looking sky. We have um, the beautiful sand dunes with the grass and the weeds. And um, the, we have the nice uh, fence posts in the, in the uh, dunes. Gorgeous, uh, our, our friendly seagulls are here. They're hanging out, squawking, they, they're happy. It's a nice sunny day and um, all, all fun. So let's get right into it. We'll just start out with the drawing first and then we'll, we'll do the painting next. But the first thing we have to do is the drawing and also we'll do a quick sketch too with some Sharpie marker just to kind of show how we created this. We basically used our own creativity to work up a scene in our mind and then we just put it down onto our paper and we created it. So it's always good to have some fun time where you just make something up as you go and you and it just turns out absolutely beautiful. So this I'm very 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 happy with this painting. It's all the things fun about the ocean, the sea, the beach, just everything uh, just gorgeous sunny day out, not a care in the world. So let's uh, start painting soon and we'll have a fun time. All right, we're back in business here. We just saw the finished painting as always. We like to show our finished painting first. Um, this way you can kind of see what the finished uh, painting looks like when you're going to be completed with this exercise. I know you're going to join along and have a great time with us here. And uh, I'm going to start out by just sort of um, what I did is I made a couple hash marks on my paper, on my watercolor paper, for some like things I want to, kind of like spots I want to make some uh, pilings up here, like fence posts. This is going to be the beautiful beach scene as we know. And so what I did is I like to um, I like to kind of work some ideas out first. So uh, I take my uh, Sharpie marker. And then I kind of, first thing let me do is, let me do a, I'm going to do a dark outline of my tape that's on my, on my paper here, my watercolor paper. So this is good to have when we're on camera so you can kind of see the, the boundaries that I'm working in here. This is my rectangle. So I'll just, let, I like to put that there just so when you, when we're doing the video here you can kind of see the space is the space that I'm using so it's basically a this is Arch's uh, rough paper it's got the orange cover on it and this is um, probably like a quarter sheet this is a 10 by 14 approximately so I'll put my borderline there then um, we can take a sharpie <clears throat> and so if you I always uh, I'll hope I'm hoping you're gonna improvise once in a while and create your own ideas um, maybe go online look at some photographs come up with some of your own creations I think the really positive thing of improvising and creating your own paintings from just scratch and looking at different pictures and other art books and whatever some of my stuff whatever you want to look at your own imagination whatever it is it helps you to think kind of quick on your feet so that when you are doing a painting, um, maybe you're outdoors and you're painting somewhere and painting, you know, live, uh, you know, on location somewhere, you'll, you'll be able to kind of move things around if you need to, create maybe something in your painting that's not there to make it more interesting. Um, so uh, I think kind of trying to improvise and just make kind of like in school when we used to make those fun paintings in school where they said you know let's draw a house and, and or you know draw something about your family or something and you draw a house and 
a cool sun or something and some clouds and a blue sky with crayons. Like the creative mode of just, you know, kind of free uh, expression I think is good to have. Um, it can really be a, a help um, when you're creating your paintings, I think. So here I kind of had that idea going into this painting and I thought, all right, so I can have a couple ideas of maybe you know, those interesting fence posts. So I thought of a couple fence posts like here, maybe like a little bit of a sloping sand dune, sand dune here, and then maybe some bushes up, up here, some wispy bushes like that. And then I figured the sand could be about here. And then maybe another sand dune over here a little bit, going up like that, maybe a little higher up here or something like that and then maybe another maybe another couple fence posts, larger fence posts maybe some some uh, a chain or a rope, maybe some rope maybe some just some wire to hold the uh, posts together something like that and you know some gra grass and things you know something simple and then maybe the ocean is going to be about not too, you know, I guess if we're standing at the beach level, we're not going to see a tremendous amount of ocean. If we were up high in a building, we would see a lot more ocean possibly, but this type of view, we're not going to see a whole lot of the ocean, maybe about that much. Maybe even less than that, something like that. So that's the ocean there. And then a, a simple sky maybe. And then just some more grasses here and there, like that. And then maybe some larger grass shapes here maybe, just to set things back a little bit. So the larger and more detailed you make things right over here, that pushes the sand dunes over here and these fence posts and the, the grass on this hill here. and the the dunes, it pushes that back a little bit, so we'll, we'll have a nice, like, three steps maybe in this painting. So we have our closest area here with our bush, maybe a little more over here too. That's in our sand here. Then here, a little bit further away, our fence posts and some more sand dunes and grass and bushes and weeds and things. And then over here, the ocean, and that's more set back in the distance here. And then our sky, just a nice simple sky, nothing. So we're going to keep to this game plan. So that's what I kind of created in my own mind. I was just thinking of this might be a really cool, interesting sort of like layout of what I could do very easily. And then I just, as I'm doing this, then I, I start to think other things like uh, this. maybe this is big here. So we keep this area of maybe a bush and some plants and whatever, maybe some flowers. We'll keep this big and then we'll keep this one small. So we'll try not to make things too symmetrical. We'll try to use the um, non-symmetrical look. So one big bush, one smaller bush with some flowers, some flowers over here, some flowers over here maybe. And then we'll keep a non-symmetrical look maybe here. Maybe this dune's going to go up a little higher. This one will have a little more flat like this. Maybe Maybe we'll make these a little bigger, these posts here a little bigger maybe, to make it look like this is set back further that way, so this dune is a little closer, this one's a little bit out further there, and we'll make these a little smaller so we could put a little small, large, so we can kind of start to think about the design of things a little more, just to give it, give it a little more... Um, a design purpose in, involved with creating this. So if we start out with some ideas and then we can fine tune it and say, okay, I have some ideas down. Now I'm going to kind of fine tune it. Let me remember, uh, let's keep things big and small, kind of, you know, we don't want to go for that symmetrical look too much. You know, symmetry is nice, beautiful in architecture. It's, in a lot of things it is, but I tend to like non-symmetrical features in, in paintings myself. I think it looks a little better. Um, that's my own, you know, you're the artist, you decide, you know, how you like things. You might want something more symmetrical, that's fine too. This looks a little symmetrical actually, even so I might want to go with like, change the design of this and say, okay, these two might be there, 
and then maybe I can just take a little bit. I have a little bit of uh, <clears throat> this. Uh, maybe I can diminish this. Maybe maybe just have one post over here and make that a little larger, like this, like that, something like that. We'll have fun. We'll just go with the flow. Have a good time with this. Enjoy the process. But I think this is a good game plan to have. You know, come up. With, I come up with some ideas on this paper first, some printer paper, and then uh, we'll put that same idea. I'll set this up in front of me, so I have my game plan going in, and um, we should be good. And you can always take this to the next level too. And you could take this and take a little bit of um, paint and water and save just like maybe one maybe a little bit of um, Payne's Gray and then maybe we can add some we're gonna say what's the tonal values maybe this is gonna be dark out here the water and then it's gonna get lighter as it goes in this way like that and then maybe we could even do a little bit of this is kind of like a value sketch let's stick with the value sketch just Payne's gray here's a little bit lighter maybe over here it's a little bit brighter maybe the uh, lights coming from up above let's make a little light insignia up here lights coming from here maybe So maybe there's a little bit of shadows over here, and over here is more bright. And then maybe our sky wash is going to be really light too. So we'll just remember, put some light wash up here. So this kind of gives us our tonal values. We're going to have a light sky, very light sky. The water is going to be darker here out in the distance and get a little bit lighter coming in this way. And then here a little bit of shadowing and some sand colors and a little bit of shadowing over here. And this will be just white paper. And then over here too in the we'll just put in the bushes there's going to be some middle tones here and here so that's kind of our our game plan here and then our bushes here they're going to be dark somewhat in the in the bottoms of the base of the plants maybe a little darker shadows there we'll, we'll go with it as we start to paint but so that's kind of like the tonal value pattern darker ocean lighter wash in the sky so we just have this too. So I'm going to set this up again in front of me. So now I have the drawing all set, the composition. I have the basic idea of the tones, the tonal values, the lighter sky, the darker water, darks and lights here and there on the sides where the uh, weeds and, and plants and grasses and things are. And then I think we have plenty to start with and we can just start drawing and... All right, so now... I did put some hash marks here, so I just erased a few hash marks because <clears throat> I think we changed our so I look here, okay this is a little higher, this is a little lower so I'm going to start to draw the first Post, fence post here. And maybe I'm going to do another one over here. Like that. And I'll do another fence post here. And <clears throat> another one here. And then I'll just put some ideas of some grass and weeds and things here. And then here maybe a little bit of a sloping 
sand dune here. Maybe we'll even keep it more simple. Maybe we won't put bushes in the front here. Maybe that might be too distracting to us. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll just keep it more simple. Maybe we'll, That's another thing. We can always leave things out. Don't worry about that. If you want to start a painting and then, in, or, you know, when you're starting out in your first five or ten minutes and you say, if you're creating this painting from scratch like we're doing, you can always say, oh, you know what? I don't even feel like doing all those bushes in the front here with the big weeds and flowers. I just want to go with a real simple composition. Some fence posts, some grasses, the ocean, some sky, and some sand, and that's all. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll change as we go, as we're working here. We could do that too as well. You always have the option to change as you go. And uh, so I'm just going to do some more. Um, okay, I'm just doing some lines and some grass. Most of my grass is going to, I'm going to have it kind of uh, going to the right. Some will, some will go straight up, maybe sometimes one will go the other way too, but most of the times the grasses and weeds and things are going to go to the right, I'm feeling. That's easier with the pencil marks. And so here there's... Just some indications of where the grasses and things are going to be when we're doing our painting. And then here we can see the sand dune. It goes up here and then the weeds here kind of and grasses are Just a couple marks so it reminds us we have to add some a couple grasses and weeds over here too on the on the hill on the sand dune here just a couple random and let's get our ocean if you want to do a, use a ruler for the ocean that's fine I'm going to use a ruler for the ocean. Now I'm going to look and see where that looks good. You can raise and lower it. I'm going to... I think that looks pretty good there. Okay, so we get, we get our line here for our ocean, then we do another line here for our beach area, the sand where it meets the ocean, the waves coming in, and that looks about fine there. Like that. So now we have our two lines, this will be the ocean. This will be all beach sand here and sand dunes here, and that's it. And then we'll have a more simple sky, just a graded wash, you know, just a simple wash, nothing uh, too fancy. And I think that's pretty good. So uh, I'm going to take a quick break, just five or ten minutes, relax for a second or two, and I'll come right back and we can start up again. And maybe over here I'm thinking... I'll maybe do another post here. Like that. Maybe that's further back. Okay. Okay, a quick break and I'll be right back. Okay, we're just starting back up again. Hey, I always mention if you if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, there's that red button right down below here on the right hand side of the screen. 
Uh, if you subscribe, you'll get all of our videos here. We're creating videos every week. So just before we start painting, I just wanted to mention that we have great videos. I'm always making uh, new uh, videos on all different types of subject matter, but it's always in watercolor. So you always know when you uh, receive an alert uh, on your phone that I've made a new video, you're going to know it's watercolor and you'll just have a great time. You can watch if you don't necessarily want to paint a certain painting, but if you're watching on a consistent basis, you're going to pick up all the techniques and methods as we go and uh, that'll help you to create much better paintings. So I'm hoping that your paintings are getting better all the time and I know many of you have sent beautiful pictures to me of your paintings. So I know those of you that have sent your pictures and you're, you're doing a phenomenal job and um, I'm just really uh, you know amazed at how, how great everyone is coming along in their painting. And um, even beginners, there's some of you out there, you, you're more in the beginner stages of watercolor. You've sent me photographs uh, on my email and I've, they look wonderful and beautiful as well. So I really, I'm just so happy that everyone that's practicing and joining along with this is really making a lot of progress and that's a great thing. So we were chock full of details on this, on this channel here. I tend to put everything uh, into my videos. I know sometimes people get a little frustrated because maybe I'm, you know, putting too much, you know, information into the, um, the videos, but I'd rather ha have you gain more information and, you know, because I think it's going to help you in the long run. And if I mention it many times in a video, you'll um, remember it more easily. And if you write it down, you'll be five times more likely to actually uh, remember it. They say if you write something down in a notebook or a notepad, uh, you're five times more likely to actually uh, remember it in the future. So I'm a big note taker. I hope you'll take notes too as we go along here. And uh, let's get started with our uh, painting. So I'm going to start out first um, with the darks, and this is a uh, Alla Prima painting, so we're going to paint this all one time. I'm not going to actually be doing a glazing approach on this painting. I'll do the Alla Prima. Usually we always talk about there's either two methods most watercolor artists use. They use the glazing technique where you put light washes on first and then you go over the top with darker washes, or many painters paint, uh, paint Alla Prima, which is just you start out your painting, and you just work right through the whole painting and you're not really so much doing like layers of, of washes over the top of one another. Um, and some people use a combination of both. I think I use a combination of both uh, a lot of times, but mostly I do a la prima. I like to start with the darks first and then do the light washes last and kind of uh, work that way. So we'll start out here and we'll get some of the darks. So I'm going to look in our sketch that I did, our tonal value sketch. So I'm going to look at this and I can even get a little more detail on this sketch if, if we want. I can say, all right, where the light's coming from this direction, let me make sure I get some shadows over here so I can put like a um, shadow here and maybe some shadow over here. So I can start to also make notes on my, my uh, sketch here, my preliminary kind of like layout here with just the Sharpie marker. So that's going to be some shadow on this side of the post. The shadows on this side of the post over here. So that's where my darks are going to be. And then maybe I should make some darks um, maybe on this side of this post over here too. If I do two posts, I do another one there. Maybe a little bit of under here. Uh, maybe some shadows over here. I think that's a good plan right there. Maybe that's probably fine. Just just a little bit of shadowing so we kind of know we want to have that little bit of a game plan there with the shadows. So I'm going to go in and I'll get a dark French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, um, raw umber, warm that up a little bit, maybe a little bit of lizard and crimson. And then I rinse off my brush so a lot of times I keep a tissue in hand here and I dry off some of my water as I'm working. So maybe some burnt sienna too. That looks like a pretty good shadow color. So I'll start my shadow colors over here. And you always remember it's gonna it'll dry a little lighter, the shadow uh, the shadows. If you're painting it with a dark wash like this, it'll 
it'll it'll tend to look lighter as it dries. And there's a little bit on this side too of this post over here. And the same thing over here. So I'm going to just put a little shadow on this side of this. And there might be a little bit of shadowing there. Not a lot of darks in this painting really when I'm looking at it. When we, when we look at this, if we don't paint these in, these larger uh, plantings or bushes and weeds, if we don't paint these into the painting, then it's probably just going to be mostly a really light painting, a lot of like light washes. So we'll stick with that idea and see how it turns out. We can always put these in later too if we want. You can always add things. It's easier to probably paint less first and then you can add in things if you, you think they might look good. So we'll do that. We'll stick with that idea of I'm going to just do less first and then maybe I can think about adding in some other uh, subject matter to this once we uh, have it pretty far along. So here we'll do another bit of shadow there on the, that post there. Same thing here. And this post might be a little bit darker. We'll make one post maybe a little Maybe a little darker on this one. We'll leave this one kind of lighter. So I'm going to do that. Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. Again, I'm trying to lively up the washes. I don't want to just take one bit of paint and just paint it one color. I want to try to add some variety to it. So you can see I'm just trying to take that post here and make it an interesting color. You can always lighten it up a little bit there, make it a little bit darker at the bottom. Then I can paint up some, just a couple of weeds maybe like that. Then I can go in and get a little sap green, raw umber. I dip a little bit of water onto the brush, make a little bit of a wetter wash there, and I'll just hit splash a little bit with some, some greenish um, warm green color and then some yellow ochre so I'm just starting to do some I just flick the brush up like that and I try to leave some white paper here and there We'll, we'll use a um, needle needlepoint brush to get more finer uh, wisps of grass and weeds and things. But for right now, I'm just trying to get some a uh, little bit of the uh, grass and stuff on the dunes here going. And again, I'm trying to add more variety of color. That looks good. Maybe we'll work over here a little bit. Maybe I'll do a little bit up here. This will be very light. So 
So I'll just take a little bit of <clears throat> our wash here, which is burnt umber and yellow ochre. I'll rinse the brush off, dry off a little bit of the water, and then I'll just make it a light wash and just I'll put a very, very light wash there on that. And a little bit of warm and cool, a little bit of cerulean blue maybe. I rinse off my brush, rinse off, dry off the, the brush a little bit, and put a little bit of blue in there. A little bit of blue there. And the same thing here, a little bit of warm and cool washes, like so. And a little bit of And a little bit of gold and a little bit of green. Just to get some grasses and things over here going. We're going to use a large hockey brush here in a little while. Once we start getting the, the majority of these posts done, then we're going to start using this hockey brush. I pre-wet it and then uh, I splay out the hairs and then this will make some great weeds and grasses. We'll, we'll be able to cover a lot of ground with this really quickly. It's a medium size uh, hockey brush. And I think I will work over here on the right. I rinse the brush off. And just a touch of color on this one. I want this post to be pretty light. Maybe a little bit of the reddish color here. Just a tiny bit of mixes of washes looks pretty good. Maybe that one's a little darker. Like that. And we'll go in more sap green, yellow ochre. We can experiment with different. So you can try different ways to use the brush maybe like that. Circular patterns always work good, especially if it's windy by the ocean here, you're going to see a lot of the, the grasses and weeds kind of tending to um, flow with the prevailing winds in that area. And again, I'll mix some more of that yellow ochre there, a little more water couple of splashes like that just to get some interesting a little bit of dark darks here and there at the bottoms of the uh, at the bottoms of the grasses and, and weeds you can put a little couple of darks that purplish color lizard and crimson French ultramarine blue a little bit of burnt umber you can kind of get some darks and leave lots of white uh, white paper along your dunes. Spots of white paper that um, kind of gives it that good feel of light uh, making it through to the sand, you know, the sand area and uh, and 
and this you just have fun. We take our time doing this part here. Um, and so we're looking good. We have um, quite a bit. We have yeah, quite a bit. Um, work done on both sides over here, so this is looking pretty good actually, very fine. Um, we'll do some more grasses and weeds over here, but we could maybe leave that go for now. Let's do the water next. The water is a good way to kind of um, start to look at the painting and like uh, the tonal values that we're using. Um, so once you get that ocean in, you're going to see the darkest dark there, and it'll start to get medium tone at the bottom portion of this ocean here and then here you've got more medium tonal values with your fence posts and your weeds and grasses so you'll kind of see like all of the tonal values in a sense once you put we put the ocean water in so let's get the ocean water in that's important because then that'll help us to see the painting a little better like what we need to do how much more dark and light we have to go with other parts that we're going to start working on so I'll take my time. I'll use a smaller brush for the ocean. Maybe we'll keep using this number four travel brush, uh, number four watercolor brush, and um, see how it goes. But I'll first take a quick break. Again, um, I like to take breaks, and I hope you will too, to relax a little bit. And um, you can come back in five or ten minutes, and then when you're starting up again, you're kind of more fresh and able to um, maybe have a little more uh, concentration uh, level. And... Uh, so I will be back in just two seconds. All right, we are back and we are gonna start the ocean, the cool blue ocean, the waves coming in. We're at the shore, we're having a great time. Let's continue on here. And we're gonna get our ocean colors. And since the ocean is gonna be dark, in the distance, the furthest distance, I'll use some more of the um, French ultramarine blue, uh, some cerulean blue, burnt sienna, sap green, and a little bit of uh, viridian green. Let's get our darkest darks. So I'm just going to go real carefully here as I go to get that first bit of the distant line. I want to keep that nice and straight. If you want, you can always, if you want to keep your line straight on the ocean, you can always take some artist tape. This works great too. Don't be afraid to use some tape once in a while to keep a straight line. Let's do that. I'll just go a little bit higher than I had my line there. So we'll start a little higher there, just like that. And then we just Press down on the tape on the one side, just the bottom edge. We don't have to do anything with the top edge of the tape because we're not going to be painting. We're going to lift this tape up in two minutes. Okay, there we go. Now we can just go over the top like that. And we know we're going to have a perfectly straight line and we can just really zip quickly through this instead of taking our time and really painstakingly trying to stick with that line. Does that make sense? We put a little tape on here and we're, we're all set. And we'll put some, I put a little bit of paint over here too, just so we have the ocean color behind here. And that gives us a, a nice feeling that we can see the ocean through the grass and the weeds and things. So that really looks good. Then I'll just dip my brush in water, just water, nothing else tap a touch off a little bit and then let's soften this edge and that's all we do right there we just go across with a damp brush rinse off the brush and tap a little bit of water off like that and a couple of little bit of dots and dabs over there I think that's good enough there then we'll start to lighten it up. Viridian green. Cobalt blue maybe. 
Now let's touch and go here. Let's leave some white paper. We're going to see some of them waves crashing in. Look at that. All you have to do is just leave white space in between. Look at that. Is that cool or what? It's simple. You leave some white paper in between the two, the dark blue and then this greenish color we're using, Viridian. If you want it more, if you want a, a more pure color, you can take some paper towel and just clean the palette up a little bit in one section like so. And then we just go with straight Viridian. And maybe a little bit of cerulean blue. And then you can do that and it's more of a pure color. You can splash like that to give it some of that bubbly feeling. Maybe a little bit of mixture there. And that's all we need. And look at we get the crashing waves coming in like that. A little bit of warm and cool. Put a little bit of gold, just a touch of gold in there, just to warm it up a little. Perfect. Look at that. Then we just lift up the tape. Perfect ocean line right there. That looks fantastic. All right, so we're we're making good progress. We have our ocean in. And then we can go in with some sand color. Just a tiny bit. Maybe a little bit of a little bit of alizarin crimson too, but not too much. I would dilute that. If you add too much into your palette, you can always lift up a little bit, blot up a little bit with the so that you don't have too much paint. It kind of helps to avoid putting too dark a wash on, so you kind of can lift up a little bit out of the palette. And there we go, add a little bit of alizarin crimson along with that yellow ochre to give it that warm beach sand feel. Then we take the um, maybe a little bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber, cerulean blue, and we'll get a little bit of that speckled sand effect. You can tap, you can tap on your, like this, you can tap on some speckles of sand. You can also um, also use your pencil and then tap your brush like that too to get some really, really fine sand kind of a feel. And you can do that everywhere in the foreground here. Then you can go back in and get bigger speckles like that. And that's all. Okay, so this looks really good. Um, I would say we should, maybe we can do a little more, of our weeds here, like that, just to, put a little bit of green in there, so we have green and yellow ochre, sap green, yellow ochre, a little bit of cerulean blue. Maybe some burnt umber too for some of the, and then I just rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and come in here. A couple of spots. I try to stick with where I was. Like that. I try to stick with where I was putting in my pencil lines, just so that I have that. Not too many though, not too many. Don't, let's not go ca get carried away. Just a couple here and there. They can be a little bit larger here on this corners of the painting. 
and I'm just scrubbing the brush on there a little bit. Nothing too much, nothing fancy. That looks good. Maybe a little bit more, so I rinse the brush off, dry off the water. This is more... Like that. We're getting there. Now we're going to... We're going to use our hockey brush. You can use um, maybe a medium-sized brush if you want to mix up some colors. Sometimes when I mix up colors with the hockey brush, I, I put it into the paint and it gets a little bit messy and I sometimes don't get the accurate color that I need because I'm kind of using this to dip into the paint. So with this, it's maybe good sometimes to just mix a good amount of color onto here because the brush is going to soak up a lot of color. So I'll use my yellow ochre. I'm thinking of the grasses. Okay, we're going to need green in there. So some green, some burnt umber, and then we don't mix it all together. We leave like blotchy, like that. So we just don't, we don't want to keep mixing these colors. We just want to put them in and get them on the palette like that. Some blue, cerulean blue, like that, and that should be good. We'll see how that looks. Let's. We'll get our hockey brush here. We dampened it. Remember, we dampened this before we started the painting so that it would be damp, the brush hairs. Then we take the brush hairs, we fan them out like that. And then we just dip it in here. We're going to need more paint, I can tell right now. But we'll try it out this way. This will give us the light, kind of that light, wispy look we're looking for. Start off maybe at the bottom with your heavier with your heavier, because uh, we know that in the bottom of the picture, it's closer to us in the bottom of the frame, the, the picture frame here, it's closest to us at the bottom. So if you start out with a lot of paint on your brush, <clears throat> you'd rather have it more paint in the bottom because this is more closer to us and you'd, you'd see more, maybe, you know, more of that paint look. Okay. Good. Then, get some more here. And then you can just start doing this, wisping the, see how good that looks, wow. And just a few strokes and you have it. And you do a couple of these quick up, just straight up, like that. Look at that. Then we come in with our other brush, so we put our hockey brush over here for now, just for a second, and then we go in with our smaller brush, and we get some of that shadow color. And we just put in some shadow. I would tend to say our shadow should be purplish with some blue. That might look good. So I'd like to put some of that shadow color in there, just at the bottoms. That gives us that nice shadow feeling in the uh, dark areas. You gotta have these darks in there to really give it, so you kinda do the same thing, you flick up and but you have to just do them sparingly. You can see how I'm doing this. Sparingly, not too many. That's all it is, really. Just doing it sparingly. A little bit here and there, leaving lots of white paper. If there's too much water on the brush, just take a little bit off with the tissue and just keep going. Like this. You can use a little bit of cerulean blue now to lighten up that, maybe some cobalt blue too. If you see something that looks a little funny, lift it up quick. So I'm just trying to get in some cool shadowing effects here and there. 
couple of splashes. If a splash doesn't come out good, you can always lift it up. And then I just make these like that. A little bit of splashing with some of that blue we mixed, the cerulean blue. A couple of splashes of that. And then we will we're going to do some before I do, I'm going to let this dry now. I'm going to let this sort of dry and we'll start doing the sky wash. For the sky wash, I might um, keep it a little more um, abstract looking, like I don't want to make it too... I was thinking of using a flat brush, but maybe I'll just use a large number 8 watercolor brush like this. I'm going to get some water on there, like that. Scrub on some water. Here and there, not everywhere. Kind of wet the paper, here and there. Put some water onto the pad, onto your watercolor paper. But not everywhere, here and there. So you can kind of see, I'm not doing it everywhere. And you can let some areas puddle up a little bit, as long as it's not dripping down. Like that. Then we can go in and we can get our sky wash. Let's use cerulean blue. And also a little bit of this mix here. A little bit of French ultramarine, a little bit of cobalt blue, mostly cerulean blue. And let's just start putting it on. Now here's where we don't mess with it. Let's just put it on real easy. At the top, I'm going to leave it darker, so let me go with a little more of French Ultramarine Blue. Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue. Let me go with a little darker up there like that. Just to give it a little bit. It's going to dry lighter. Guarantee it. It's going to dry lighter. A little bit of that Cerulean Blue on top of that. Then, I just start taking this blue and just kind of putting it in lightly and just see what happens. A little bit of white paper here and there is not going to hurt anything. And I just let the water flow down the paper. Have a good time with it. You have to practice this a couple times, maybe on a separate watercolor paper first, to get that feel. And that looks pretty good. We're letting the watercolor do what it does best. If we add lots of water on there and let it flow, it really looks great because you can't do this with acrylics or oil paint. So that's one thing about watercolors. You can do a lot of things with watercolor that you really, it's impossible to do with, not impossible, but most people would agree it's kind of, doesn't look great. Watercolors look great with the, lot, with the water tons of water. A little bit of orange here for the just ever so slight orange at the bottom. Here's where you have to keep your brush just a touch away from that ocean there so that it doesn't leak into the uh, dark color of the ocean. So I just left a, a little space between the, the orange, uh, slightly orange wash here. I just left a little bit of white paper there so it doesn't again affect the uh, now what I can do is I can take a piece of paper towel quickly, I take a piece of paper towel quickly and I fold it a couple times and I make a nice little crease like this and then I just take up that little bit of puddle, there's a little bit of a puddle there I just lift that up 
same here, so that there's not much water there. Then I can go back with my small brush, rinse it off in the water bucket, clean off the water, dry off the water, and then I can just you know kind of just blend that into the to the ocean area just a little bit and then that's fine that's all we really needed to do there and I think that's looking really good we'll need a little more wash um, on the uh, sand here so we'll do a little more of that golden color on the sand here we're not going to leave that completely white but our sky wash looks really fantastic it's got that real classic watercolor look this water just diffusing and looks great. So let's continue here. Let's work on some of the sand on the beach area, our sand dune area. Let's um, we'll take some more of the um, yellow ochre, and then I dry off a little bit of the yellow ochre on my on a piece of paper towel, and then you can just wow! Look at that! You glide the. Look at that, you glide the brush over the sand and you're using the paper, which is rough paper, Arch's rough paper, and you see how you get that sand look? Because the paper is rough, so you just kind of dry off your brush a lot with your gold color, yellow ochre, and that's it. And then we can also put a little blue in there, very lightly. Warm and cool. We don't want everything the same color. We want to mix in a little blue to the sand too. And then even a little bit of um, alizarin crimson for that nice warm sandy feel where it's nice and warm, the hot sun. So we'll put in some alizarin crimson too. There we go. And then if we want, I wouldn't do anything with the sky right now. Maybe after that sky dries 100%, you might, you might think you could add just the tiniest touch of um, alizarin crimson to the sky. There is some gold in the sky, as you can see, but we didn't have any alizarin crimson in our mix with our sky wash. We could have added that in. We should have added that in. But you can't always remember everything when you're working. So that's something where I'd let this dry like the next day I'd go back in and take the ever so much slightest amount of alizarin crimson like that very very light wash of alizarin crimson and I would just put a little touch of that in the sky here and there just blend it in super light <clears throat> that might make it look a little better but I think that looks good the way it is and then we're just going to do a couple finishing touches. We'll, we'll take a break first. And I always mention, too, in my videos, you'll always hear me say uh, to please subscribe if you if you would. Um, consider subscribing. It's the button right there on the bottom of the right-hand bottom of the screen. Uh, this way, when we do these new videos each week, you can join along with us. Watch if you like just to watch and have a fun time seeing how watercolor artists create their paintings. You can watch along. If you're actually going to maybe consider taking up watercolors, you can learn about all the processes we use, the colors of the paints, the washes, all that kind of interesting stuff. So uh, feel free to join along and just watch, or uh, maybe you're going to start painting yourself. You know, you never know. Um, and uh, we'll come right back in just a minute or two. Um, that's about it. I'm just going to take a quick break, and we'll do some more very fine um, uh, wisps of grass and some weeds to just make a little more finer detail to this and then that'll be it. We'll, we're pretty much like 90% complete now with this painting. So we'll start up in just a second or two. Okay, we're getting started again and uh, let's uh, finish up our painting. We had a lot of fun so far. Beautiful washes, the ocean, the sound of the crashing waves. We got our gorgeous sand in here, our warm sand, our beautiful watercolor sky. Just a few more finishing touches to the painting and I think we'll um, be all set. I think the first thing I want to do is I kind of noticed I'd like to do a, um, maybe a seagull here. The paper's a little bit damp but I think I can um, I can do this. Actually it's going to be a little bit, I might have to let this dry a little more. So I might do that maybe tomorrow or something. I'll add in a seagull because this is very damp, this paper. 
So I'm going to let the paper dry naturally. So that takes about, you know, a couple hours or so. Maybe I'll, I'll draw it in on the uh, finished painting and you'll see the uh, finished painting maybe with the seagull. But let's just do a couple more bits of grass, some weeds and grass. Um, we can use um, any colors we want now because it's going to be a little dark. Burnt umber, uh, a little bit of sap green. Um, we'll use some yellow ochre too. It's going to be a golden, darkish golden color. This way it'll kind of, we can see it. I'm using my needle point brush here. And again, I'm using um, some uh, burnt umber, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of um, cerulean blue, a little bit of sap green. Kind of a nice mix of all the colors we've been using. Then I take my brush and I just tap it on the paper uh, paper towel or um, tissue a little bit. This way there's not tremendous amounts of... Uh, and then we just want to do some some nice... Uh, just to give it ourselves some interesting detail to this so it's kind of and then we can do a couple over here. That's all. Just a few here and there. Don't do too many. If you do smaller ones, that's fine. You can do a lot of the smaller ones. But if you're going to do the larger ones, you know, like that, we can't do too many of those that look a little funny doing too many of those. So let's do the smaller ones over here and there. Again, less is more. If you can hold back and not do as many, you're going to be happier. You can always go back in and do a few more later. So you can always you can always go back in and add a few more. But and then I'll put a few in the other way. Sometimes you, I don't know, I'm kind of learning as I go. And like that. Go. I think that's good. And then maybe a few more splashes just to um, break up the... Uh, I have a lot of grass, wispy grass everywhere and weeds. Got to, I have to have something to balance that out a little bit. Maybe some more splashing just here and there. That looks good. Maybe we'll take a quick break and we'll, we'll get that seagull done. Maybe I'll take the blow dryer and I'll blow dry off this area over here and we'll put our seagull in quick and then we'll call it a finished painting. All right, we're just starting back again. Uh, I did a little bit of blow drying to dry a few areas on the paper so we can do our seagull here. So I'm going to get my seagull in. And I'm just going to... There we go. One seagull there, maybe another one over here. Th 
this one smaller. So we make one small, one large. And we'll get our fine brush here. And what I'll do is I'll probably, I'll just use what we have here, maybe a little cooler. It's a grayish color. Payne's gray and ivory black I think is good. And I'll try to go the ways of the like that. Maybe I'll add a little water to that. And then I'll lift up a little bit because it's pretty light gray. Let me see. Perfect. There we go. And I won't get too fancy with... Uh, I'll just try to get it. There we go. That's all. Just a little indication. And the tail's a little darker. So I will do that. And we'll do the same thing here. Make this one a little lighter. And then just the ever so slight amount, I dry off the brush a little bit and just make the the bill and the eye, and I think that's good. I think it looks fine, not, not too much detail to the birds, they're very uh, light. I'm trying to smooth out a little bit there, like that. If we wanted to, we can get a little bit of titanium white. Take a little bit of titanium white. I need to I add a little bit of a yellow ochre to the titanium white, just a little bit like that, just so it gets a little bit uh, of a warm kind of white. And let's see if we could just add in a little bit of white. That looks pretty good. And the same over here, just a touch of white. And if it doesn't come out great, you can always lift up a little bit of paint like that. And then just uh, try another little bit of white. So I'm just going to try to put a little bit of white there. That looks pretty good. There we go. And I also thought what might look good is um, that I didn't do before was maybe a little bit of um, a little bit of fencing or wire on the very light, ever so lightly, just a very light grayish wash um, with our needlepoint brush. We dry off a little bit of that. And we'll see if we can just do like a nice swoop here, like that. That looks pretty good. Just a couple little lines with for some 
fencing wire or whatever, you know, between the um, the posts, and that looks good because this is a very simple painting. So if we can add in a couple little small details like that, it really does um, make it look much better. And then we can just peel off the tape here, and uh, it looks a little better when we frame it out with some tape. I always encourage everybody if you're painting out there try to tape around your paintings because when you peel off the tape it gives it a finished look. Kind of frames it out nice. And that's our beautiful ocean scene. And I hope uh, you enjoyed this and we'll uh, be back next time with some more gorgeous paintings. We're going to do lots more of this. Seascapes, boat paintings, we're going to do some landscapes, we'll even do flowers. Uh, figures. We'll do everything. Everything watercolor and um, we'll have a great time. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.